So this is um, the actual breadboard hookup of the circuit. You can see here the battery connection and I connected the negative lead into my negative of my breadboard and then I have positive I haven't hooked up yet. So the speaker is, hook is hooked up with alligator clips to the breadboard and then that is also connected to ground and so I have a wire to going to ground. My 270 microfarad capacitor, 0 0.0 for seven microfarad capacitor and 10 ohm resistor, and then I've connected it to the analog discovery two. I have a reference to ground from there, the negative lead of the oscilloscope number one, and then the positive lead I have connected at my output node, and then my input I have into the op amp um, with the waveform generator one. In the waveforms, I've opened up both a scope. You can go to the welcome screen and you can open scope, wave gen, and any other um, measurements that you want to use. Right now we're going to use the waveform generator and the scope. Um, I'm going to have a sine wave input. I can start it at 50 hertz and have an amplitude of 1. Um, when I connect this and turn it on, you're going to hear a buzz. So you're going to see that I'm going to change the frequencies and the um, amplitude and you're going to hear kind of some of the differences. That's what you also need to do on your circuit. And then the other thing you're going to see is at some amplitudes you're going to see some distortion. The first goal of testing is to be able to create this Bode diagram. So you're going to do that by um, finding first this A1 value and then you're going to find A2 Remember that's 3 dB less than that flat reg region's value. And so in dB, that would be 3 dB, and converting that to volts per volt is 0 0.707. So you're going to find 0 0.707 times that flat region, and then that value is what you're going to find for F2. So to do that, you're going to start the waveforms. Um, you're going to put in a waveform. You're going to start it at 10 hertz with an amplitude of 5 millivolts. Make sure you hit run. And then you also want to have the scope for channel 1. And I haven't plugged in the positive yet. And so um, run for the scope. And then move the channel so that you can see it. And then change the range divisions so that you can see. And then also change the division so that it's easy enough to see the amplitude of this. Then you're going to go to um, right click on this and then you're going to change this measurement to free. And then you're going to, um, you can stop the waveform so that you can measure the top of the waveform to the bottom. And we're going to use the same measurement for all of them. And I think I'm going to actually change this to a wider. And then for um, the frequency, then we're going to change the frequency. So, you know, you can change it to 100. And then make sure this is running again, and you're going to see that, that that amplitude is actually still pretty much the same. We can change the divisions so that it's easier to observe. And you can see that, that yes, that is the same. And you can also see that there's some noise in there, that you get those spikes in and out. That's actually noise that's being 
that's happening on there and then you can change again and kind of keep increasing that and then changing the division so that you can still see it and you see that the amplitude is still the same so you're going to make that measurement here you can see that delta and so record those values and then we want to keep increasing this now until we're about um, 0 0.707 below that so I'm going to kind of make a little you know you want to actually get the actual value but um, then you're going to um, you know reduce that down to the value it should be and then you're going to keep increasing the frequency on here until you get to where it's less than or about you know about that range and so you can see here at this was one megahertz this is clearly below that reduced range so it's somewhere between one mega and and where we were before which was I think one kilohertz so you can go down to the different ranges and you can see okay that's still larger so it's greater than 200 kilohertz so it's somewhere in between 200 kilohertz and 1 megahertz so just keep moving those and if you need to you can actually type in you know a range 400 kilohertz and again that's still larger than what we're needing for the 3 dB point for critical frequency so keep testing that until you're able to get all the values and figure out what F2 is and then draw the magnitude Bode plot. So the other thing you want to do is kind of listen and understand more about the distortions. So to do this you're going to mess around with the different um, frequencies and amplitudes. So you know going back to kind of that 10 Hertz um, and the and then raising the amplitude I can see that this you know, is going to have a lot of distortion on it and you can hear the differences. It now sounds like more of a clicking. And just keep going around until you can actually see this screen well. And you can see that you're starting to get more distortion on here and kind of some of the differences. So, so I'm going to increase this. And now I want to, um, I'm going to increase it even more. And I can hear now some of the differences. And you can see this is called clipping, where you can see the flat region on the top. That's called clipping. And as I get higher than that, you're going to see it even clip more. So you can see that that's almost a square wave. And so you can see that's that's more of a square wave and kind of the difference in sound that you get and then kind of record that and then so do change the frequency a lot change the amplitudes a lot and see you can hear as this gets you know higher pitch and that's more of a full square wave and they use the the distortions 
can hear the difference now. And then that's more back to a square wave. And so the distortion is more what we saw at that lower frequency. That's a square wave again. Um, and there's just a tiny bit of distortion on that one. Raise up the frequency so you can hear it a little bit better. And you can kind of see how some of that is, this is starting to become what's called the distortion, where it's not a clean, really clean sine wave. So play around with that, get an understanding of the differences in frequencies, the difference in amplitudes, what the different distortion kind of sounds like. And then part three of this is to create your own design, um, do a little research, find something that sounds fun to build, and then also kind of do some investigation for that. Um, Make sure that you do upload the video of it working for whatever your design is. Um, but then also kind of play around with some of the differences in the frequencies and signal part of it. And that will conclude this lab. Good luck.